mentioned cloud server. Okay, where is it? Yes, we're recording now. You should have a little button that showed you that, but it should just record uh, myself talking. Right, so I just want to talk a little bit about um, glazing with um, acrylics tonight. And I've got a few little um, paintings here that I've been working on in acrylics. Um, I'm going to just put my barrier cream on because it's good practice and it means I can wash my hands a lot easier. I'm actually training myself to be less messy with paints. So, you know, usually those of you who've seen me before, I'll be wearing an apron. Well, I'm not, I'm wearing a new dress, so I have to be very careful. I know it's risky, but it's the way it's, the way it's gonna be. So that can go aside there. So what I've got here is I've got an acrylic uh, here, just a big canvas with some blobs and bits of color on. It's not really doing, there's some interesting bits I like here, but it's not really hanging together as a painting. So time to put a glaze on this, that might help. It's one of those things that you do when you think, um, when you're at the stage where painting is resolving, but um, it need, it's not there yet, you know. Glazing, you don't generally do as underlayers. It goes on top of what you've got underneath, yeah, because it is a thin layer of paint. And the idea is that it shows what's underneath still. This one has been done in acrylics as well, but it's quite textured. You can't see it. Not as textured as some of uh, Les's are. And it's um, some of my favourite plants. It's some hydrangeas, very seasonal. This one is a more traditional little um, house painting that's sort of, you know, the bones are there, but it's flat, isn't it? So I'm going to use a glaze on that to help that stand out of it. And finally, I'm going to put a little bit of glazes on this. I've just put some black ink on there to dry, just um, so I can show you what glazes look like on a black um, background because you you can see them more on black or white than you could on on colors yeah it'll show out more so there is a couple of things I like to use for glazing one is baby wipes that's the tools to put it on one would be a baby wipe and one would be then a very uh, big brush you know sort of almost like a, a soft decorating brush yeah um, because that's because generally you want it on very thin and to cover mm. a lot. So if you use just a smaller brush, it, you, the effect wouldn't be as good. I do like to use baby wipes to put it on because you can, you can put it on with one stroke and then if you don't like it, you can immediately then, with the other side of the baby wipe, wipe it off, you know, and it's quite a good immediate way of doing things. So let's just start with this guy see it okay so what i've got now is got lovely areas of contrast i've got areas of interest what i'd like to do i've decided that the thing i want to bring the viewers attention to here is the um hortensia the um hydrangea here so i'm going to actually put some a purple glaze onto that which will it won't lose the lights and it won't lose the darks it'll just intensify the darks it'll bring out the mid-tones a bit and I'm going to try and go around the white areas because I want to leave them. So the way I'm going to do that is with, just going over to my paints here. Yes. And purples, yeah. So the two purples that I've got, generally mixing purple is a good idea because you'd mix it from the colours that you are using. But I tend to keep in stock a very warm purple, which is the violet dark permanent violet dark, and then a really cool purple, which is the dioxin purple. That's really good for shadows. So because I want this quite warm, summery, I'm just gonna use a little bit of this. So I use, generally as a rule, I like to use these fluid paints, which are not quite inks, and they're not heavy body, they're a little bit in between. You can use, and I'll show you in a minute, you can use a heavy body paint, just your normal thick acrylics, uh, they'll need watering down a little bit to make a glaze because we need to make it thin and you can use inks. You can um, water these down, these kind of paints, acrylic paints, to about 70% with water before they lose their ability to actually stick together. You know, the molecules won't bind and you won't get a, a haze of colour. You can go a lot further than you might think, you know. So it's always better to make it um, more, when you're glazing, start off with a very, very weak solution, you know, a very watered down solution. 
You can also buy, if you want to, you can actually buy glazing liquid, which you would mix with your paint, you know, to make it even thinner, very thin. And this then is a gloss, but you can also get matte or satin. So it would be up to you, but I find a baby wipe's got just the right amount of moisture on it for the fluid acrylic that I use. Um, and the idea is that you should hardly be able to see this, right? And I'm just going to do it on this bit of it. So let me see if you can, that's too much there. So I'll just pull that off. There it is. Now I'm glazing the same sort of colour on the same sort of colour there and I'm, I'm putting it on and then I'm pulling it off. I'm being quite careful about it. I'm putting it on a bit thicker, you know, a bit darker where the shadows might be. But just let me show you that it is actually working. You can see where I've put it on there. You can see that it's a definite colour, but because it's actually on there, it's just provided depth to that, that the standard flower like this doesn't have. Okay, and that's it there. You can see how actually how thin that is because you can see behind it. So it's still, the idea of a glaze really is that you see what's behind. Let me just wipe that off a little bit more, you know, just to make it a little bit thinner there. It's, it's subtlety. And you could do that, you can do glazes with contrasting colours. So if I was putting the purple on there, you know, it just adds a little bit of shadows and things to it. Or you can do it with the same colours just to build up depth of colour. <coughs> I'm just rubbing that off a bit because I didn't really want it there so much. But that was nice. I quite liked those, so I'd go on with all that. You don't have to be too precise with, with the glazes either. You know, they're quite nice to fray around the edges. and it's almost like the idea of light bouncing around you're playing with that you're playing with depths of light you're playing with transparencies talking about glazes now and transparencies there are a few colors that i would not recommend for glazes only because they're all very opaque in nature okay so any um things like chromium greens and I've got it in fluid, but this comes in a, a heavy body as well. It's very, very opaque in its colour. So even if you thinned that right down, it would still, you know, it would just cover over what's there. You wouldn't get that glow coming through. Uh, things like anything that's called titanium, it's got white in it. It's got titanium white in it. White doesn't make a good glaze. You can use it for, you know, like a snowy effect and to push things into the background, but I wouldn't recommend it to start with. It's, it can just neutralize the colors too much. So anything like this, like a Titian green pale, that means titanium green pale, you know, and then you can read the, the things on the back, the colors that it's made of. It's on the front with this, where's it gone? <clears throat> I think that's in here. Well, it would have on it, Oh yeah, <clears throat> there we go. Yeah, tit titanium white in the um, there, you know, and that's gonna, that's always going to be opaque. So avoid that as um, a glaze. Things that make excellent glazes are the quinacridone colours, and I use a lot of those for uh, glazes. And I'll show you another one now that I'm going to use on here. Um, where's it gone? <laughs> Okay, so this one is a quinacridone nicolaso gold, which in its tub like this looks quite dark brown. But on the label here, you know, you can see this is like a, a layer of the paint there. You can see how thin and transparent that actually is going to be. So I use this a lot to warm things up. So what I've got here, I'm really quite liking the design of this. But it's not, you know, I need it to hang together a little bit more. So what I'll do with that is a glaze is a great way to finish a painting if it's not just quite working. You know, you can really wed together the top and the bottom. I put in a little bit of that on. You're probably not going to see the colour shift too easily because it's so... Um, let me just put a little bit of this on, on white for you can, so you can see what it does. I'll put a little bit just on here. You'll see the kind of color that I'm working with. 
it's quite a very cold gold, pale gold color. But I like to put that on there and then I'd put it down here and I'd put it onto the black as well. I'll put it onto those white bits. Just generally bring it into all of it. And that does actually, all the quinacridones dry with a slight sheen to them as well. So it kind of, it nicely blends all that in too. So yeah, baby wipes I just love. But you get the, you could get the same effect with water and a, a big brush like this, and you know a little bit. Baby wipes are just a lot more um, controllable, I find. It brings out the tones, any pinky tones. You know, the gold will bring out any pinky tones. If you're glazing with say green gold, um, which is another very transparent color then that would bring out your greens, you know, the undertones in your greens. It just, you know, it just gives you a whole layer of professionalism about your painting, a depth, you know, that maybe um, you would lack. So when we come to a building like this, now this is just painted, just painted. It's kind of um, a burnt sienna base, you know, and a little bit of titanium white, so quite opaque, put on quite patchily there. And now I will just get a little bit of this Nicolazo gold again on here. Let me see. Right, so. Just going to bring that to light without hiding anything that's underneath it, you know, any of the little. Uh... Hello, Brent! <laughs> there we go. There we go, that's all on there. Just gives it a bit more subtlety, a bit more depth, you know? And even these bits where it's sort of, I've gone onto the white, I'll, ju I'll just repaint over the white and there'll be little bits of it there. So it's all about just building up the layers and always, always then I'd just rub it, clean it off underneath, you know, and on the roof, just to add a little bit of that color all around. I'm hoping you can see this because it's a subtlety, the demonstration that I'm, I'm doing there with that. One final one for you then. Let's just use this. Two more types of glazes that you might use. Uh, what you call the interferences and iridescence. And they always work a lot better on black. You can use them and they're very subtle on blue, but you wouldn't see it here on lighter colors. So I'm gonna use it on black. And this is something called an, a shimmering green. It's um, an interference color. Essentially, they interfere with the light waves coming through. Um, they always come out quite white like that when you put them on the tube, and they don't really look like much. They just dry a little bit shiny. You can get them in golds, reds, greens, blues, you know. And the idea is that they'll only um, refract those kind of lights. Just put this on with a, you put this on with a baby wipe with a brush. But this is all, this um, is in the nature of a glaze as well. You know, and if you put that thinly onto any darkish color, it's really going to add some vibrance and some shimmeriness and some color, but without, you know, being overpowering. Again, it's gonna depend on sort of how much water you put on with it as to the effect that you would get with it. You can build up layers and layers of very, very subtle sheen and color with that. You know, you could put a, that's an, what they call an interference green. So you could then put, you know, an interference blue in with that, interference red. And before you know it, you'd have a beautiful sunset on a sea, you know, because you'd have the background being very dark and punchy. And it'd actually read as a dark value for your comp composition as well. But it would, you know, you'd be making it up with these lovely lights light bits there, little flex. And of course, uh, you could use it in the nature of a glaze as I suggested with this, in that you could put it, you know, into the top and into the bottom as well. And then you're not spoiling your design, you know, you're not painting over with any big colors, but you are keying it all in together, coordinating it all together. That's the purpose of glazes really is to that word, uh, a cohesiveness to your paintings by bringing one color to here to here, but 
not in a way that uses colours as part of your design and that it alters the value, just that it makes it cohesive and that you've got a bit of green shimmer in here and a bit of green shimmer in here. It doesn't actually um, alter the value. There we are. Of course, you, as I said, you can use thick ones as well, just water them down really well. Um, just put a tiny bit on with your baby wipe and rub it hard. And you can always take them off, you know, because acrylic stays wet for quite a while. So if you decided you didn't like it, just get in there. Especially if you're already really nice and dry underneath. And take it, take it off. So that's me. I'm going to stop that recording now. Thanks for that. I'll just, um, and feel free now to unmute yourselves, please, because it would be nice to chat to you.